When the Incarnate Latron hit and we saw the performance, we were blown away. It was absolutely insane, fantastic, the dawn of a new meta, and up until this point, nothing really could challenge it. The Miter, though, might have something to say about that. Hey guys, welcome back as always, my name is Lazar and today we're gonna be diving deeper into the Incarnate Miter. I'm gonna have an endgame setup because these Incarnate Adapters are not exactly new player friendly. That said, we're still gonna be going through everything that you need to know. What functions, what doesn't, what evolutions to pick up and how does a build look like. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the Incarnate Miter. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped, and for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The base miter is a saw blade launcher, and it sounds fantastic, saw blade launcher, but unfortunately for the longest time in Warframe, this one hasn't really been used for anything outside of popping bubbles, I'm talking about Nula fire bubbles. Now as soon as you install the incarnate adapter, you're gonna get yourself the fancy new crosshairs that changes configuration as soon as you go aim mode like so. Underneath it, you will have a loading bar, when you get headshots, that loading bar is gonna be charging, and yes, these are the effects, these are like, like the hit saw blade things that hit the target and then they bounced off. Digital Extremes used to do details like these which are really quite cool. Just a couple of shots will mean that you get a full charge on your loading bar but you can change to incarnate for with every single charge. It doesn't matter, just even a little bit and you can still change. Before we change to incarnate mode, however, this one can also be fired either rapidly, like I have been up until this point, and as you can see the saw blades do bounce, which is fantastic, but you can also charge the shot like so, you can keep it in like you do with the Lankai and release it when you're nice, good and close to your target or ready to fire. This one means you're gonna be doing 150% extra damage, you got better critical chance and better status chance as well. But now what you came to see, transformation to the incarnate form. It looks the same but gets additional details, some kind of... Barb wire? Yeah, Orokini barb wire void thing, clearly. Now on this fire mode, the projectile kinda looks the same but not really. Much like the Latron, this one is bouncy, is a whole lot quicker and is affected by projectile flight speed and with each and every single bounce, my friends, this one explodes. Not only that, but take a look at this. What is going on? Is it dropping off? Is it a uh, grenade launcher? No, my friends, this one, much like the Seto, locks on to targets and can hit multiple. But just like the Seto, if you don't aim it right, you can actually miss the entire pack as well. Like so, as I aptly demonstrate. It's pretty easy to charge this one even without multi-shot, but of course with multi-shot this is gonna make things a whole lot easier. And outside of your initial target, the saw blade is gonna be bouncing three additional times and you can see it if you look closely. Have a look! You see it bouncing from target to target. There should be something said here. Plus projectile flight speed while helps the initial travel speed of the projectile once it makes contact with a target, this specific speed from jumping to one target to another is not affected by plus PFS. So bear that one in mind. It essentially just, after it makes contact with a target, it spends like half a second on that target and simply locks onto another and goes. And at times, plus PFS may make it harder for the actual initial projectile to lock on to a target, but I would still go with plus PFS, especially considering since you are going to be using your weapon with things such as this, like longer range shots. It also looks like you're not losing any of the damage with each and every single bounce. The range of the explosion is 3 meters and the damage drop off is at 20%. Evolution 1 simply enables the transformation of the weapon, so we're gonna have a look at Evolution 2. You got fantastic options here, yes and no. Take a look at this one, Swift Saw Blades. Increases damage by 77, yes, base amount, fantastic, beautiful. With channeled abilities active, plus 70% fire rate. Now this specific trigger is, is buggy when it comes to Warframe, in the sense that it likes only the abilities that consistently drain energy from your Warframe in order for that active buff to be, you know, active. The problem is, even with those that actually consistently drain, it's still on the buggy side for the most part. And with other abilities, it simply doesn't work. So we're still waiting on the dev to clarify either how this trigger is supposed to work or fix it since honestly it looks pretty bugged. The second option is called Plentiful Mayhem, increases damage by 57 instead of 77, so a pretty big difference when it comes to the uh, base amount of damage. Multi-shot consumes ammo directly from capacity and increases damage by a 20% multiplicative effect. We saw this talent on the Incarnate Brat, an amazing fantastic weapon. 
The thing about the breath, and it kind of works there because you can easily charge the breath and it's a hit scan really quick attack. Not that you can charge this weapon really quickly. The problem is it consumes so much goddamn ammo. You're gonna start consuming in its incarnate form like five ammo per shot. It's not really worth it since you're gonna be sent back to normal form really quickly. And there's also a pretty big discrepancy when it comes to the base damage you get. 57 instead of 77. For the time being, I'm actually recommending Swift Saw Blades on this one. At level 3, this is the usability tree, so normally it's a bit of dealer's choice. My recommendation to you fantastic people is gonna be Swift Deliverance with 50% projectile flight speed. You already know if you saw the intro what affects this weapon and how when it comes to plus PFS. Ready Retaliation, reload from empty, 100% reload speed. That is fantastic because it affects the transformation speed. How fast does the weapon transform from normal to incarnate? And that definitely does matter when you're facing level cap and you want everything to be as smooth and as quick as possible. And the last one, increases ammo capacity to 160. Honestly, no. It takes two shots with multi-shot on the weapon maximum. If not a single shot to fully charge the weapon, then you're going incarnate form and that's when you're going to be dumping your ammo. This one, from my point of view, is not worth it. For the time being... Swift Deliverance. Evolution 4. I was really hopeful about this talent. Sawblade Storm. Whole charge shot for one second to increase the area of effect. It's fantastic. It's glorious. It's stupendous. And it only really works for the normal form. So we're just gonna skip it for now. Your only options, realistically speaking, are the following. You got yourself Critical Parallel and Commodore's Fortune. 22% base critical chance. So you can have a look over here. Or 12% base critical chance and 12% status chance. And honestly, I have been going between these two. But ultimately, because of the explosion that accounts for only... The explosion on this one accounts for about 60% of the damage. But this one doesn't really apply anything outside of heat and the elemental combo that you made on the weapon. We're gonna go on for the higher crit numbers, Commodore's Fortune. It should be said, however. If you choose to go for critical parallel and your critical chance goes to 32%. I'm talking about the explosion. Yes, that has two damage components. The projectile making contact with a target remember four targets maximum and the explosion if you put on critical delay that means your critical chance goes to 96 percent so you're only missing four percent crit chance there it's not a big deal you can go for this one it's not a mistake but for the time being my friends commodore's fortune 22 percent sending the base to 42 and of course we're gonna go way over 100 percent with 200 percent from critical delay as for the build itself, what I want you to keep in mind is that the Mitre can be accessed at lower mastery ranks, but it's really not that great of a weapon unless you put that Incarnate Adapter in. You're not really gonna be able to do that until you grow a bit in mastery rank, so this will be an end game setup. The Mitre is not the type of weapon I recommend to new players, but it's definitely flavorful and has its advantages. A build will look something like this, an end game setup. We're gonna be using Galvanized Chamber, we are not gonna be using Galvanized Aptitude because it does not apply its damage benefit to the explosion, but it will be applying its damage benefit to the projectile making contact with a target. I'm not gonna say it's a mistake to use it, but I wouldn't use it because you're not getting that damage benefit on the explosion. Critical chance, critical damage, critical delay, and vital sense, and like I said before, 100, well I said 140, well 126% crit chance with a 22% evolution. Hunter Munitions is a no-brainer, the 260-60 mods. You can skip the 60-60 mods and simply use your secondary or perhaps your pencil full profile to apply vital procs. The reason why I choose to build vital on the weapon because right now we are playing steel path circuit, level cap, etc. And you want the weapon to stand on its own two feet and make sure everything is gonna go smoothly. What if you don't get the secondary primer that you want or uh, you're not gonna get a companion either. So for the time being this is definitely the way to build. And we're also gonna be using a faction mod, my friends. We're gonna be using Prime Bane of the Corrupted for this specific demonstration. But you can switch this one out for a little bit of flat damage. On a build, you should always have at least two sources of flat damage from my point of view. So Serration instead of this one, not a bad idea. You can go for something like this. You can even add another element on the weapon, but considering we're not gonna be using Galvanized Aptitude, it's not necessarily the best of ideas. In the... Arcane slot, from my point of view, you're gonna be going with Primary Merciless since a lot of your targets are gonna be dying under the effects of procs, and this one is simply the most reliable. Not necessarily the most powerful per se, but when it comes to reliability, that's gonna help you a whole lot more when it comes to KPS, not paper DPS. So bear that one in mind. In the Excellent slot, like we talked before, Terminal Velocity, you can change with what? 
minus recoil the weapon basically has no recoil in its primary form and in secondary form as well so it doesn't really matter all that much we're gonna be testing out the weapon like so so you can see how she performs oh one last thing regarding bane mod if you're going steel path circuit like most of us are nowadays the fodder enemies there are corrupted those enemies are gonna be dying regardless if you use a bane mod or not the actual tougher overguard enemies count as frax so you don't really need the bane mod you know what on that note fuck it let's remove it or should I just show it because it does add additional power? Stream your call quickly, right in the chat. Bane mod or no Bane mod? We got one yes. Remove both. Nah. Remove disgusting filthy mod. No Bane. Nah. No Bane. <laughs> you already said I'm uh, using it. Yes, it's my video. I can change my mind if I want to. It's my party and I'll cry if I want to. Remove no Bane. I have better experience with amalgam serration without bane, no banes, alright? The votes have it. It's gonna be either serration or amalgam serration. There you go, my friends. No bane mod! The stream has spoken. Banes should be removed from the game. Well, that's a bit aggressive now, isn't it? Level 165, corrupted heavy goons! And if we're not using a bane mod, I should also spawn exogogs that. Hold on. Level 165 Corrupted Heavy Goons and Exogoog stats. So let's see what the weapon can do. No Riven mod, nothing too special. These are the Exogoog and these are the Corrupted Heavy Goons. So I'm gonna go for a couple of headshots. As you can see, I'm already fully stacked in the incarnate form without having any additional multi-shot. The weapon is not stacked, even though this is a galvanized setup. Now I'm getting stacked. And if I'm getting stacked, that means I'm getting a whole lot more damage. That was a single shot. I don't know if I got all of the bounces completely and utterly annihilating the targets with great prejudice. That was a single bounce. You saw the projectile go off there and still tons upon tons of damage. Look at that. Beautiful. Fantastic. Glorious. And now the weapon is a bit more stacked. So we're going to keep on going with this. Honestly, the performance of the weapon is just simply insane. It's crazy. It's fantastic. I absolutely love it. Look at it. Look at what it does. It just melts everything that stands before it. Applying crowd control with the bounce, with everything. The slashes, the heat, the vital procs. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. It's glorious. And yes, my friends, if you chose the miter, you chose right. And if you follow my content, of course, you chose the miter now, didn't you? <laughs> Now, that's pretty much it when it comes to normal level performance. If I were to add a Riven, because here's the thing. Is Riven Dispo 5 out of 5? It's crazy. It's Riven Disposition of 5 out of 5. And my two Rivens, or at least before the Incarnate, were super cheap. Prime Firestorm is going to be increasing the explosion radius from 3 meters to 4.3 meters. It's not a huge jump in performance, okay? It's only 4.3. The damage falloff, however, is fantastic at only 20%. So if you feel, hey man, I'm not going to go with Prime Firestorm. Maybe I'm going to be using my Bay mod, or I don't know, maybe a bit more multi-shot, or... Or something that we haven't talked up until this point. Neutralizing justice. Justice. This one is the bubble popper. And most of us use it to pop bubbles. That is nullifier bubbles. With each and every jump, you can neutralize yourself additional bubbles. So if you still want to use the miter as a bubble popper, go for it. Keep in mind, we don't get nullifiers in steel path circuits. So for the time being, nah. -uh. But it does work with each and every single individual jump. Now, for me, I have the following Riven, Critical Chance, Critical Damage, Multi-Shot, plus Weapon Recoil. Yes, it's not mine. It's amazing, it's fantastic, and somebody got really lucky with this one. He, she rolled it only once, which is insanity, which is glorious, which is fantastic, and I'm gonna be replacing the flat damage. You can also swap out the uh, Prime Firestorm if you think this one is not worth it and for the guys that really must have a bane mod here i didn't forget about you guys i'm gonna use a bane mod especially considering that next we're gonna go to steel path against the uh corrupted one more time level 165 exogoog and level 165 corrupted heavy goons and keep in mind when we hit the exogoog we will have one dead mod on the build go for headshots charge the weapon change Let's see if I can hit it like this so it doesn't bounce off. Oh, 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 baby. Now that's good. Now that is pretty goddamn good. Not fully stacked yet, but you will see that the weapon performs. Oh, and another thing that I wanted to point out. I'm going slow, but this is an automatic trigger. You can do this. The reason why I'm going slow is because I want you to see what the weapon does. It does that. 
it bloody does that it's fantastic it's glorious it's stupendous my friends and you should have farmed it if you haven't don't worry about it if you didn't pick the mitre adapter just yet it will roll back around it's on a six week rotation will it still be this powerful when it roll backs around I don't know, but for the time being, it is definitely an amazing, amazing experience. I don't know how much Mitre Ribbons go for nowadays. Uh, they were before this update, well, before they announced it, I think it was like... No, nobody was selling Mitre Ribbons because nobody was buying Mitre Ribbons. Why would you need a Mitre Ribbon? You would just use it for the bubble pop. And like I said before, this is automatic. It's an automatic trigger. Oh, those guys got hit by one of the... Did you see that? Essentially, a wayward projectile locked onto them and absolutely annihilated them targets. How fun is that? And of course, you can shoot from a distance as well, especially if you got the extra PFS. It's going to be very, very easy. You hear that? That's every time the bloody projectile bounces and makes contact with the target. Beautiful. Fantastic. Glorious. But I know what you're saying. Dude, you're shooting standing still targets. How horrible. I can't live with something like this. Let's head on over. To the path of steel. Welcome to the void, my friends. Now let's see what the weapon can do. And in the effort of transparency, I did replace Serration with the uh, Bane mod for the Corrupted. Because we are going against the Corrupted. So it's a no-brainer at this point. I can tell you from the get-go that you're gonna vaporize everything with great prejudice. With great vengeance and might. I mean, was that a capture target? No, it wasn't. There's really nothing that will stand before you because they cannot stand before you. They Look at that. That target died like half an hour later because of the bounce of the projectile. And I know what you fantastic people are thinking. Hold on. Is this better than the Latron? Is this better than the Latron? The new meta of Warframe. And the answer to that one is... You're gonna have to tune into the versus vid. You're gonna have to, my friends. You're just gonna have to. Cap up. Honestly, I don't know at this point. I need to run a little bit of math just to make doubly sure of my findings so far. But for the time being, you can get yourself this amazing weapon if you chose the adapter for it and annihilate whatever stands before you with great vengeance and might. Now, me shooting these helpless little targets is not exactly sportsmanlike. It's like killing a fly with a hammer. If the hammer was light and easy to use and absolutely freaking amazing weapon, right? So we're just gonna wait for an Acolyte. Keep in mind that I do have a faction mod on and I honestly don't think the faction mod works against Acolyte. Correct me in the comment section down below in case I'm wrong. And the maximum charge is 20 shots, which may not seem like a lot, but when they bounce like that, well, it becomes a whole lot more interesting. Like that. I didn't even see the... I didn't even see the These targets, oh, wow, that, that bounce was amazing. That was just, do you even bounce? I think I'm gonna call it the bounce beast mode. I need a very strong title to, so players understand how powerful this one is. I call the latter on the new meta because it is. But fuck, man. <laughs> Acolytes count as Stalker, which is apparently its own faction laser, so zero existing faction mods do anything okay so if it counts as its own faction then it doesn't do anything thank you the fool of gravitas for that flash flash we got a flash ladies and gents we got a flash we shall be unloading upon torment and this time i'm actually not gonna use it as a semi-automatic i'm using it as an automatic there he is there he is stand still <laughs> Bye bye now. Bye bye. Thank you for playing Warframe. I doubt the Torrid can match this. I seen the Torrid, I read the numbers. I don't think it can match this. Because what you need to understand, paper DPS is one thing. But this is just for you guys. Paper DPS is one thing, but the usability for sustained DPS and KPS is a whole different topic. It doesn't matter that I can do a quadrillion damage if I don't actually consistently put it down. It's like horsepower. It doesn't matter if you have a gazillion horsepower and a gazillion torque if you can't put it down on the road. Right? It's the same thing. It's power without control. It's essentially worthless. Now tell me, my friends, what goes well with saw blades? 
I, I don't know either. But we're gonna be using Lady Mirage Prime for the Warframe buff section because she is the best weapon buffer frame in the game. Corrosive projection against heavily armored targets at this point should be a no-brainer. Please do not feel forced into this one. It's not the end-all, be-all. Simply use the aura of your choosing. When it comes to arcanes... I don't even need arcanes. For, for that matter, I don't even need to buff my weapon, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because I can. Arcane Avenger R5, why not? 45% critical chance bonus additive after simply stacking on top of what you already have, applying to your primary, secondary, and to your melee at the exact same time, which makes it fantastic for Steel Path Circuit. As for your main arcane, honestly, when it comes to this one, it should really be reserved for your Warframe, something like your Energize, Armor, etc, etc. You want more flat damage? Let's say there was not enough room on your build to get some flat damage you still need it you can't completely ignore it you can get something like rage but it's on headshot and sometimes the bouncy blades get a headshot and sometimes they don't so there you go whatever you want pick your poison it doesn't even matter at this point as for companion buffs, even though you're not gonna get companions in Steel Path Circuit, you can go for something like the Panzer Buffala, which will be getting yourself a vital procs on your targets, in which case you can swap all the vital mods on the weapon for something else. This will only apply if you know exactly where you're going, the entire setup, the enemies you're gonna be fighting, yada yada, blah 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 blah, etc. If not, you can go for a Sentinel. Any Sentinel will do, my friends. Just make sure that on that Sentinel's weapon, you have the Vigilante mods for the chance to increase critical strike tiers. This is not like having critical chance, it's a different mechanic that upgrades the tier. And more is better, right? More is better, said DE. So, we're gonna be spawning in the same targets as before. Like they haven't seen enough abuse up until this point, I'm gonna unpause them so they can hit me and I can get my glorious, absolutely glorious buffs. We're gonna activate Empower for Mirage and her free ability for absolutely sky high damage increase and her ever so lovely clones. Now of course I can kill them with the normal strike like so, with procs and all whatnot, but that's not what you wanna see, you wanna see this. Words escape me. I've been doing Warframe weapon build guides for years and I have I have no reaction to this. It is glorious, it is fantastic, it is amazing and I'm not even opening up the full power of the weapon to do something like this. Why would I when I don't need to? I go shot by shot because the magazine size, the full charge of the Incarnate is 20 and I don't need to open up on these targets because if I were, a single shot is enough, more than plenty. As for some conclusions, if you chose the Mitre, like I said it before, you obviously chose right. This is right now one of the most powerful weapons in the game. Only the Latron can give it a run for its money. It is far above the Strun in terms of potential damage. And honestly, you should enjoy it while it lasts. I know what some of you are gonna say. Hey, listen, man, they're gonna nerf the crap out of this because it's so powerful. Maybe. But you know what? I'm having fun with it right now, and I have been having fun with the brand new Incarnate Weapons for three weeks now. Even if they nerf it tomorrow, they're not gonna take away the fun that I had. And that's the way you should think about these things, from my humble point of view. As always, my name is Ben Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoyed the content. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. You can tune in to our Twitch live streams as we are recording right now live if you want to see everything being done live and you can also catch me on facebook and twitter and discord and if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it consider supporting us via patreon there's gonna be a link in the upper right portion of the screen right about now i'll catch you guys in the next one Bye bye